everybody. Thank you for coming. My name is George Emanuel. I am an agronomist working with the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CARDI. And I will present today at the Tropical Agricultural Conference on coconuts, but more specifically, the seed as it says the success to good coconut production. Okay, before I actually go into my production, I want to talk to you a little bit about why we're actually looking at coconuts. There is a regional project which has been going on for uh, almost four years. It will end in 2018. We have two persons in Belize who are actually part of this project. One of those persons spoke to you this morning. She is the biotechnologist on the project. She is Ms. Tomara Avila. She is also the Belize country representative for CADI and myself as the agronomist on the project. This project is being implemented along with one of our partners in development, the International Trade Center, and it is funded by the European Union. The project in itself has four components. Two of these components we are responsible for and the other two components, the ITC, the International Trade Center, is responsible for those. In the slide behind me, those in red are those components of that project that CARDI is responsible for and the ITC is responsible for regional cooperation, although we play, CARDI plays part of a role in that as well. And they also look at trade and market information but we as the research institute will look at the components to deal with productivity and sustainability and risk management so who are the participating countries in that regional project on the slide behind me you will see we're we're stretching from central america to south america with the island chains, the archipelago in between. So you have Belize, Jamaica, uh, the Dominican Republic, Antigua, Barbuda, Barbados going down, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia, and you have Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Suriname and Guyana in South America. So a total of 13 territories are participating in this regional project. It started off with about 12, uh, 10 countries at first, but because the other countries of the region in which CARDI has representative offices have recognized the importance of coconut as pivotal in developing the industry and as an income generating activity. They wanted to become part of the project and so before the project ends in December of 2018, they were able to join that project. Okay, uh, I told you that we have participating countries from all over. So in this slide behind me, you see the biotechnologists. But where are we there? We are in Mexico, uh, along with uh, professionals and other technical people from across the region, from Suriname, Guyana, participating in the management practices for the use of tissue culture planted material and Ms. Avila was the lead in that part, that part in our component of the project. Okay, okay so I'm jumping in right now into my uh, presentation. In, during our travels in and around the region, the Caribbean region, the is not unique to it, we have come across practices in coconut production which are not the best and as part of our efforts we want to ensure that we can assist and so one of the ways in which we're doing this is doing capacity building and training etc but we want to ensure that your success as a coconut producer is going to begin with you using good planting material. All right? So, what is planting material for coconuts? A little earlier today, we, 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 were, we had the pleasure of listening to Miss Avila in two of her presentations on seeds and 
seed propagation is one of the ways in which we can guarantee good planting material for coconuts, which is the one which is generally used. We now have the use of biotechnology and uh, although we, we have not started the, the least component of the introduction of the tissue culture planting material, we have other areas in the Caribbean region who where Ms. Avila did training and so they, they have already been on the ball with that part of using tissue culture planting material as the material that you are going to use for you to begin your quest in becoming a good coconut producer, okay? I don't want to repeat much of what she has said, but of course, what is a seed? The definition for a seed is right there. Um, but in the case of coconuts, the seed is this, which is also a nut and which is also a fruit. Okay? So this is what we're going to use as our propagating material, which is what, is what we're going to use to begin our production of coconuts. And this is what we're going to refer to as the seed. Yeah? The a small dried fruit. Small dried fruit. And why is a coconut a fruit? Because it is fibrous, it is the type of fruit which is called a droop. But it is also a nut because a nut is a one seeded fruit. But it is also a seed because this is the part of the plant that we're going to use to make a new one. Right? So this here talks about what is a seed, why is a coconut a seed, why is a coconut? Okay, let's move on. So the coconut seed is the mature fruit which is going to be ready for, for planting. But of course there are practices and management that you have to do with it prior to you actually going to plant it out into the field. So generally it is ready when you have a bunch of nuts and in that bunch of nuts you would begin to see that one of them starts showing a brownish color color the cafe is beginning to turn brown that means that the bunch is mature for tall varieties tall varieties of coconut palms the nut or the fruit which you're going to use for the seed is mature 11 to 12 months 12 months 11 to 12 months for dwarf varieties it is a little earlier so in dwarf varieties you will find it becoming Mature to use as a seed, 9, 10, 10 months, 11 months. For tall varieties, 11, 12. Okay? Now. A healthy coconut seed. This is a representation from a healthy coconut seed. We had consultants working with Cardi and they did presentations talking about and explaining to producers <coughs> as to what a good seed is like what should be used as a good seed. Now, uh, in one of my capacity building sessions, I asked a, a, a producer, where does the root emerge in coconut? And he told me it emerges from here. And I was not amazed because I too, I thought that the roots came out from there in coconut. But then eventually I grew older and I got to learn that the root and the shoot comes from the very same position in the coconut. So here I have a dehusked coconut which has sprouted and it will show you that the root and the shoot come out from, from the same place. And that is important especially for management practices when you would be setting up nurseries and establishing nurseries in some cases you will notice that some management practices have the nuts set vertically others have it horizontally and we try to promote that to set it slightly horizontal with the embryo part of the nut 
at the top. So we spoke about part of the seas already. We're not going to go. Okay. So this slide will show you uh, a seed which has recently germinated, and of course, the other picture will show you the de-husked coconut after it has <coughs> after it has germinated. So you have the area which shows you the, the, the roots and the area which is going to show you the sprout. And here this is a representation labeled as to the shoots, the root section of the coconut and well, I already told you that the root is, doesn't come out at the point, but at the same part where the shoot emerges, right? Okay, so this basically, we have spoken about the coconut as a fruit, a seed, a nut, and we have looked at the structure of it as a seed, yeah? What do we do when we want to ensure that we have a viable plantation, a plantation in which all our nuts are going to be growing and grow well and produce so that we will not be ashamed when we're ready to go to the market. You have to select your seed material. You will select from palms which it is a regular bearer. It is between 15 to 40 years old which is the age of a mature a mature tree. Um, of course, we know that dwarf varieties may live up to 60 years, and tall varieties can live up to 90, even 100 years. But during the, the time a tree, a coconut tree is between 15 and 40 years, we're expecting that at that time it is in its uh, adult but youth stage, and it is still very viable and vibrant. Yeah. The stem of the tree must be straight and sturdy. It must have at least 25 open fronds or leaves. So you look for those characteristics in a tree that you would want to select seeds from. Okay? And of course, if a coconut tree is 15 years old, if you have not harvested from it, that tree would have at least 12 bunches of coconuts at different stages of growth. Obviously, why is that at every month thereabout, the coconut with the mature tree would give off a new inflorescence. So a tree which is 15 years old would have at least 12 bunches of coconut on there at different stages of maturity. So you look at for those characteristics in your, in your tree and you map those trees and you tag those trees because you would want to go back to those trees because they have the desired characteristics that you want. Yeah. Okay, so of course you exercise your discretion. Care should be taken in selecting your palms. You want to ensure that the palms are free from pests and diseases that uh, you know where the parents of those trees are. Uh, a little earlier, Mr. Meyer explained that hybridization is, is not a bad thing because you know who the parents are for your, your, your offsprings and you can make your selection from there. So, of course, the, the, the seeds that you would use in your plantation should have been exposed to the same type of climate, the same type of weather. You do not want disparity in your growth because you're going to be managing them after all. Usually toil varieties are the ones which have been used for producing coconut oil. Uh, these varieties, including the Pacific toll and the Atlantic toll, the Atlantic toll, which is a, a, a toll variety which has been native to this part of the region, practically uh, has been disappearing or had been disappearing over time because of diseases called lethal yellow. But the toll varieties of coconuts are the ones which have been generally used for producing oil. The dove varieties, 
and other ones which have been used generally for the production of water. And you have dual purpose varieties which are the hybrids more specifically and they are used for both oil production and for the production of fresh coconut water. Yeah? So our if you're going to where is it? The lady she says she's interested in starting a coconut farm. So I asked her, what do you want the coconuts for? That's the first question. You want to start a coconut farm, what are you going to do with your coconuts? You want to produce coconut oil or you want to be a producer of fresh coconut water? That is dependent on the type of seed selection that you're going to make and that is depend and then that of course will depend on what you're going to plant for your in your in your plantation. Um, of course, the hybrids are intervarietal crosses. You have parents, a male, a male parent, and a female parent. There is a process of doing emasculation and pollination. We're not going to go into this; it's a, a detailed process. But you use pollen from the male. Pollen comes from the male, and then you place it on the flowers or the stigmas of the, the females and you get uh, a cross um, mother and father to give you a new coconut which is a hybrid or an F1 and that is what you're going to plant. Of course you cannot use nuts from hybrids because they would not give you something which is true to type of the hybrid because they have been crossed. So you might either get back one of the parents or you might get something similar or not close to any at all. Yeah? You also want to use nuts which are healthy. You don't want to select nuts which have been affected by coconut mites specifically because you will be taking those from where they are, if you visit, say, San Ignacio and your farm is in Corozal and you take infected seeds from San Ignacio and you will be taking them to Corozal and you, that is what you try to avoid. So you want to use nuts which have no damage from mites or any pests and on the slide behind me you will see this insect scale insect damage which affect nuts in many parts of the region and so you want to avoid much as possible not to use those type of nuts for your seed Okay, so we will store the seed nuts. Remember a little in, a, in a, one of the previous slides, I mentioned to you that the mature fruit to be used as a seed for tall varieties will be ready in 11 to 12 months and that of dwarf varieties will be ready from 10 to 11 months. But you, would, you can store them for a little bit before you actually use them to germinate. So there is a period of which you can store them as long as the nut is mature and you would have harvested it, it is going to begin this process for it to, to germinate. And so you don't want to store it for too long and therefore so for dog varieties you can store them for up to 10 days. 10 days, 10 days to a week, a little more than a week, two weeks, you store your, your short varieties. The taller ones can last for a little longer, 21 days to a month, but you actually want to ensure that the sooner you can set them in a nursery after you have harvested them to be used as seed, the better, yeah? Okay, this slide is just to give you information that of course we are part of the project and we do capacity building and training for people with, uh, uh, who would be our partners in development, for example, the Ministry of Agriculture, we have established three nurseries in Belize at three agricultural stations, one in Central Farm, one in Estan Creek, and one in 
your crib. And so we have participants, extension officers, and other technical persons who will be undergoing training, capacity building activities in how we manage coconut seed nursery. Very well. After you have harvested your seeds, you want to set them in a nursery to take care of them so that they can germinate before you set them out into the field. And you will construct a bed. You will build a bed out of whatever material you have. It may be wood chips, it may be used, it may be the best soil. But what you want to ensure is that you build beds in which you can take care of those seeds and as they begin to germinate that you can nurture them, that you can take care of them, you can do your selections of those which 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 germinate quicker, those which germinate more vigorously, those which show which which don't show signs of debilitation. Um, on, on that point, uh, Mr. Mara can tell you while we were in Mexico, we, we witnessed tall varieties which generally would begin production after five years, going into production after two years, just by doing that type of selection. Yeah? Ensuring that those which germinate first, those which show much bigger, that selection is made, another selection is made, and until you could actually find seed nuts from tall varieties coming into production after two years. That is not the general case, but yes, they have those in, in Mexico. Huh? Okay, so of course you want to construct the beds, you want to make it, you want to, you don't want to pile the seed nuts all together, you want to have them to have enough space so that they can grow and develop, yeah? So here we have an activity, you, you, so the selection of your planted material is very important and how you take care of them. In this slide we have participants uh, from up north uh, participating in how we take care of seed nurse in the nursery. Yeah? Very important. After they have germinated, just like a baby who is growing, it must be nurtured, it must be taken care of, you must ensure that baby is clean and bathed. And the same thing you do with your, your seed nuts, you can be able to take off the weeds in your, in your, in your nursery bed, make sure that it, is, it stays healthy and stays clean. And of course, your management practices must be such that you are able to do that. In a seed nut nursery, generally once a month, for the most you may have to be, you don't have to do it twice. In, in agriculture, we say nowadays you work smart, you don't work hard. You work smart and you get a better result. You do your checks for pests in your nursery, your regular checks, you may want to employ the expertise of a professional, uh, very knowledgeable of the practice and your learning, so you can call the office, ask for Mr. Myra, ask for myself, call the ministry, call Mr. Trujillo, or Mr. Nabet. These are persons who have experience and been working along those lines. So of course, you get these people to come and identify what might be your problems and that type of thing. We're going to plant our coconuts. Um, you dig a hole 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters. You dig it deep enough, depends on the type of soil you have. If your soil is a very fertile soil, you don't have to dig very deep. If your soil is very sandy, if it is very clay, all of those would determine how deep you, you dig your hole. Of course, you want to add some organic material in there, in the bottom of it, and <clears throat> ensure that you can pack the soil tightly around the coconut. If the soil is very sandy, you may want to add a stick and tiny your young seed into it so that the breeze doesn't blow over and those type of things. But after you remove your seedling from your nursery, you don't want two or three days to pass before you actually set them in your plantation. Why? Because it will begin to get that stress and that water stress and that type of thing. Uh, of course, I, I, I mentioned to you that, uh, that you, you dig the hole, you put your organic material, you add some topsoil, you mix it with it and you plant the coconut. These are the optimum practices. These are the best recommended practice for planting your coconuts. Now you will tell me that long ago, your old man just took the seed and he just threw it there and he let it grow. 
Yes, it grew and it produced. But if it did it with a, a, a good management practice, this productivity guaranteed would be higher. That's just basically what it is. So, of course, you say, you go by the sea in placenta and the coconut drop and it grow and, and nobody will do anything to it. Fine. And that is correct. That is true. But if you, as a producer, take your time, plant your tree, give it this organic material, it's water, it's care, it's uh, clean it from pests and diseases. Generally, you would be getting very productive trees in the time when they are going to be. Depend on the type of variety you have, you have different spacings. Of course, you can also do intercropping with your, with your coconut. So for door varieties, you plant them seven meters apart. Hybrids, eight, tall varieties, 8.5. Hybrids and tall varieties can be planted similar distance. Um, some people plant a little closer because they want more trees. Your management practice would determine how well you, you do this, but of course you don't want to overpopulate an area which would cause your, your trees not to, to grow well and to do well because of the availability of the nutrients in the soil. But with this planting distance, you will get uh, that number of trees. Okay? Hybrid, you see D times T, that means it is a hybrid in which the, the mother is a dwarf variety and the, the father is a tall variety. So when a hybrid is written, the mother is always written first. So if the mother is a dwarf, you put dwarf D times crossed by a T. You also have dwarf varieties which are crossed, so you have D cross D and you have tall varieties which are crossed as well. And you may also have a parent a mother parent which is a tall variety so you can have a tall parent and a tall mother and a dwarf. Generally in the case of the Mepan that which is common in Belize and as well as the Chaktimal that you will see a little bit we talk about the parent is the mother is the dwarf variety, the Malia yellow dwarf. Okay so this basically is my pretty much my last slide on my presentation presentation but of course Record keeping is important. Uh, you you do your household budget, and so you keep records. For those of you who work in an office, and you have to do your procurement forms and that type of thing, you have a budget, and you must keep records of the things you buy, when you buy them, and where you have them placed. It's the same thing with with your coconut plantation and your coconut nursery. You got to keep records and good records at that more specifically if you want uh, funding from from partners they want to know what are your records and what are your cost of productions and those sort of things so among other things for your plantation you want to have what is the name of the varieties that you may have where did you get them from what day you planted them, what day the nuts were harvested. And, and those type of, of records are very important, very important for you to keep. And you can keep signage on your farm, in your nursery, but of course in your office, which can be even your little back room, you have your record, records noted. Yeah? So I've come to the end of the presentation aspect. Uh, Cardi, who we are, myself, our country representative, we have Mr. Lindo here, we also have Mr. Noe. We, Cardi was established many years ago, 44 years now, 45? Yeah, 44 years, 1974. A treaty was signed in Georgetown, Guyana. Cardi was evolved and we operate in the entire Caracol region. If you want to contact us, this is our our coordinates for here in Belize. Um, we call and ask for Ms. Omira Avila. She is the country representative. All your problems that you have, call her and tell her, right? She, yeah? Okay, so, so this, these are our coordinates. You can take a photo of it and write it down. And thank you very much for your attention. We will now take your, your questions. We have a, 
a display here. Um, before I actually, before we actually go into your questions, questions, we will talk about some of the stuff that we have in the display. And yeah, so thank you very much. So I told you we'll talk about a little bit what we have in the display. Um, we have a few door varieties here, and next to each variety is uh, a container with the water which was extracted from that particular nut so you can have an appreciation of the amount of nut the amount of water which comes from these particular coconuts but also we have <clears throat> two sets of bunches of coconuts one of them is This here, they, they do get a, a little bigger, but this is the Malaya yellow dwarf, right? It's a dwarf variety. It comes into production early, about after three years it begins to get now. Just suppose this variety is this one right here. This is also an improved Malaya yellow dwarf. It has been, yeah, this other one right there is an improved Malayan yellow dwarf. It has been hybridized of sorts. It doesn't show the characteristics of the male parent plant, which is what they have to look for in that in that in that cross. But it has been improved. So it is a Malaya yellow dwarf variety. It would it would react like a Malaya dwarf variety. Has bigger nuts, even more water, but it is it improved. What was being attempted in the production of this is right over here. So we have not independently done extensive research uh, uh, as an institute, but this variety, this hybrid variety, Chaktimal, is being requested a lot. It's a dual purpose variety. Has lots of water. It has a good copper and can make good oil. The mother is the Malaya yellow dwarf variety, and the father is a Pacific tall variety, which basically comes from Mexico, which is called the Mexican tall, right? So the Mexican tall variety, uh, Pacific tall, from the Pacific coast of Mexico, is crossed with the yellow Malaya dwarf to give you this Chaktimal. Now, it, 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 it's heavy, it's heavy, I'm going to put it So the dark thing is there, the nut is heavy. Uh, it, it has a good copper, it has lots of water. A lot of water. Um, and supposedly its parents are highly tolerant to the lethal yellow, yellow disease. So that is why it is being used. Um, it's been experimented a lot now in Belize. It has not been introduced for quite a long time. Um, I don't know from text, how long have you been using it? They have it for four years. For four years? They have it for 16 years, 17 years. 17 years, so it's been here for a little while, and it has been, it's doing well, it has shown... One location, mm. 17 years. One location. Uh, so obviously it has characteristics, remember we spoke about when you select your seed, what you want to do with it, so here you have a hybrid which, which um, has very good characteristics for, as a, as a dual purpose nut. It comes into production early, and like the, the mother parent, the Malaya yellow dwarf, three years, it comes into production, gets into full, full production after four, five years. But <clears throat> it is a hybrid, and it is, we know that it is a hybrid because it has the characteristics and the color of the, 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 the father parent, which is the, the green or the bronze, of the tall of that Pacific variety. Uh, yeah, so we will. Oh, uh, this of course is a Malaya dwarf variety. It is beginning to sprout 
and it will show that it is yellow. If it was a hybrid, uh, we would know, and it was a... Uh, yeah, competing with the truck. A hybrid. So if it was a, a hybrid variety, this little sprout would look green because it would have taken the characteristics of the flower. Of, of the flower. So what, 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 what is done in, in, in hybridization, they use two different colors basically. So if the mother is yellow and the father is green, you cross them. If it's green, it's hybridized. If it stay yellow, well, you know the father never good. So, so this is this is. So um, I, I will take whatever questions you have. Uh, um, I know your questions will be fast and furious. Don't ask me anything you think that I will not answer. But so yes, sir. Oh, no, 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 you drop it there, man. Your question is your fruit dropping prematurely. At what age, at what size? So it would have, it would have been, would it have been fertilized, the female flower? I know what your problem is. I also have that problem. It's a drunken bayman. They come, they take off all of the pollen on the male flowers, and so for a dwarf variety, which is a self-pollinated variety, it cannot self-pollinate. So the little little nuts, which are actually female flowers, would eventually drop. That happens a lot when you have that problem. Yeah. So I think that's what you have. Uh, any other question? Yes. Sir. What is the major pest that affects coconuts? That's a very good question. Um, and I will answer this question for you in this way. In Belize, we have pests such as the South American palm weevil. It is a, a, a very important pest of concern for Belize, not only because it lays its eggs in the trees and the lava eat out the inside of the trees and the trees eventually die. But it is also a vector for a nematode which causes the red ring disease which also kills the plant. Ah. Yeah, here we have <clears throat> some specimens of some South American palm weevils courtesy to Mr. Noe uh, Oliver. He is the technician working on the coconut project. Um, I can tell you he's very busy collecting data. He collected those because he's part of uh, a demonstration experiment happening in three different areas in Belize and he is doing an insect count. So you can pass this around. Um, The, the creamish looking one is the, the larvae of the, of the beetle and the black ones are the South American palm weevil themselves. So the adult, of course, I was trying to see if you could actually see which one is a male and which one is a female. But you can from your naked eye. The, 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 it's a weevil, so it has a small, stop, a small snout. The male has a moustache. A little, little brownish hairs that you would see on the stuff. The female doesn't have, but you can pass it around and take a look at it. So that's one of that's answering one of the pests which attack coconuts in Belize. You also have coconut mites. Uh, they affect the coconuts. You have other pests such as the Ambrosia beetle. You have scale insects. You have a whole hemipteran complex of insects, scale insects. Uh, you call these uh, white flies, uh, hoppers, you have red palm mites, and a lot of those are generally found on the underside of, of the leaves. So some of them you may not see them with your, with, that they are there, but they are usually there. Okay? Uh, question. How far does the coconut leaves look like in the air? When does it affect? 
How far does the coconut weevil fly? No way. How far does the coconut weevil fly? This is three miles, three kilometers. It varies. Um, at what stage does it affect the plants? At what stage is the plant affected or at what stage does the weevil affect the plant? The weevil affect the plants when they're young and growing. You don't see them, generally you won't see them in adult, adult plants. Because I don't know if they can fly very high. But they fly long distances. But um, in, in, juvenile, in juvenile trees, trees which are less than 10 years old, you would find them. They bore a hole in the area, the crown area of the tree. One adult can lay in its lifetime 250 eggs. But it will take only 30 larvae to kill a tree. So in one particular tree, uh, Ms. O'Mara will tell you she saw a lady cry in Crooked Tree Village because when she thought she had destroyed this tree and partially burnt it, there were larvae still living inside that tree. Yeah? So it, it is a difficult, it's a difficult pest to control. It can be controlled. But it is an important place of concern, not only because it destroys the tree on its own as an insect when it bores holes, it lays in the, the eggs, and it, 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 the larva develops, and of course, you know, it exists to get the tree. But it is a vector for a very, another important place of concern, the red ring nematode. And that also lives in the parenchyma vessels of the tree, sucks out the life of the tree, and the tree dies. So you have two people still in one tree at one time. Any other questions? I know it is raining, and we're coming close to the end, but I, I am going to take your questions until... <clears throat> so with regards to the South American palm weevil, yes, man, there are a number of pesticides that are uh, commercially available. Mr. Oliver actually is trying out one. Um, well, he's doing a multiple type of experiment in that he's using attractants and repellents. The attractant has a form one which attracts the, the weevil and then he applies an insecticide which is going to kill it. But the, the attractant also is an insecticide in itself. So it would actually kill it. So, so there, there are there are there are chemical formulations that, that 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 you can use. What is important, though, is, for example, in the case in which you would set your traps, um, and it will be good for us to if we could have demonstrated how we set up the traps and those type of things. But you want to ensure that any formulation that you would use, you use the doses which is recommended by the by the by the supplier or, or the manufacturer. Um, we're using lash lanate. Yeah, the active ingredient is lanate that is used to, to control it. But I'm sure there are other commercial formulas which may be available. But in Belize, the one which is commonly used in, in, in the trucks that they use is that one. Yeah. We also have uh, 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 no chemical one where they take the trap of water. saying is uh, one form of the integrated pest management that you would use. Um, pest management does not always mean that you would use a chemical. In this case, you're using a trap. Um, it's a device in which you put the attractant, uh, what is going to lure them into the trap, and of course it has water, and it gets into the trap, it can't come out, it drowns, and it dies. So if you have two, three trees, on, in your yard, yeah, you can do that. But that would be counterproductive if you have 
each of the people's electric stuff. You may still be able to do it, the control may not be as quick or rapid. Uh, you would get some measure of control. It may not be very, very, very effective. It is effective nonetheless, but for a small area. Yeah? Any other questions? Okay, the, it's a technical question. What is the fertilization regime for coconuts? What Mr. O'Mara is telling me is to invite you to our Cardi Open Day on December 5th, where we will be addressing all of those type of questions. Actually, we're embarking on a, a series of workshops to go into the different districts. Uh, but in, on December 5th in Cairo, in Central Park, you are invited and we will be talking about a lot about... Um,